<laughs> See, we're, we're just a shell anyways. So this shell is going to come to death and it's going to re be removed. But then I'm going to come up with a new body and I'm going to put this coat back on. Because he came to redeem both soul and body. Resurrection. Alright, so at any rate, he asks a question. What then can I do for you? We all know this story. The response is, okay, well, I want a double portion of what you got because I like it. And his answer was, man, that's a hard thing to do. What's so hard about having a double portion? Well, it's quite simple. Pretty hard to put two cups of oil in one cup. <laughs> it don't fit. Two cups of oil does not fit into one cup. But that's okay. Because he's talking about the anointing that Christ said that he would have without measure. It was given to Christ, the anointing without measure. Or it couldn't be held anyway. Then he said, whatsoever measurement you measure out, it shall be measured back into you, pressed down, heaped up, shaken, and, oh yeah, running over. Because you can't hold it. In fact, you're not even supposed to. Maybe, maybe I'm just too obvious. Again, I'm, I'm aware that sometimes my wife tells me all the time, just because it's obvious to you doesn't mean it's obvious to everybody. So without portion, or without, again, I have to refer to another spot where we're talking about this same anointing because it is the anointing. When Mary was going to wash the feet of Jesus. She broke the alabaster box that was full of anointing oil. Why is that significant? Because you can't control something that's broken. It pours out without being, ooh, just a little bit. No, it's uncontrolled anointing. Right? That's why this is a hard thing. Because you can't control it. You can't fit two cups into one cup. It's going to run out. It's going to run over. Now what is this anointing? That's the life that is given you. It's life. <laughs> See, we're to spread life. Jesus said, while I'm on the earth, I am the truth, the life, and the way. When I go away, as you. Alright? Okay, so, if we're going to be that, then we have to come to baptism. Being dead with Christ, risen again to newness of, what was it? Life. By the Spirit, that anointing. And like he told Martha, no, Martha, I am the resurrection. Right here, right now. There's life. If, then Jesus himself says, if he were dead, yet shall he live, and if he's alive, he shall never die. Because life cannot die. The anointing without measure is life. Jesus himself says, I came to bring you life and that more abundant. See, I'm, I'm like the little guys that could not remember the rest of the scripture or where was that. I know it's there. I know it's there somewhere. Maybe they learned it like me. Sick. I'll tell you that when I learned the scripture, I learned it as it was written. 
and not with numbers by it. Uh huh. Oh no, it's, it's, it's Psalms. It's, it's 119 Psalm. Oh no. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him to leave, make it me. T-. And all these things. But what verse is that? I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I don't. So I'm working on that, though. I, I really am. Or at least I'm trying to. So I can almost understand where they're like, Oh, one, two, three. I don't know. I learned it as a passage, not as a verse. Maybe I should have learned it else, but that, yeah. Okay, so, I'm aware I'm rambling right there. And I'm on the clock. So, let me get back up here to my notes, because we're, we're as far that way as we can get. And let me find out, because I never did actually yet, but I'm will. But I, what I need to find here is... Mm, ah, John thirteen thirty six. If you would. John thirteen thirty six. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, Where I'm going you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Okay, so same basic story. But, yeah. Except for, in this case, they still couldn't figure it out. Where are you going? That we can't go with you now. Now, in Second Kings, not only was Elijah aware of where Elijah was going, he wasn't going to leave them, but everybody they came across also knew where he was going. Hey, aren't you aware that they're taking him away today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, leave me alone. Because as the Lord liveth, I'm not going to depart from you. Mm-hmm. See, I want you to really realize that this is a pretty significant difference between, I'm going to call it the modern church, even though it's almost 2,000 years old, that's where we get our most of our whole teachings, is we really have no idea where we're going. And why? So, I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they, you ask, when is Christ coming? I don't know. Where is he going? I don't know. <laughs> What's my point in this? I don't know. <laughs> but God, I say it all the time. I know I sound like a broken record to those of us that are around me. Fortunately, for none of you have heard it, so it's all new. But God, who is always purposeful and intentional, does nothing by accident. He didn't save you from something to bring you to Nothing. Mm-hmm. He saved you from somewhere to bring you somewhere else. Amen. You're not saved from sin to go to sin again. Uh-oh. Right? Purpose. See, even when you're to bring that offering, which you're going to get to, behold the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. She talked about him over there. This Lamb or this ram, this had to have been purposefully intended for that very thing. Couldn't have just been some random goat that they just went out and, hey, this one looks good, let's Mm. get him. Mm -mm. This offering was born for that. Purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how Jesus got to be the Lamb of God, who was born for that purpose. Which brings you to the place of the Tower of the Shepherds, where he bring Christ. That's how the shepherds knew where to look for him. 
They didn't wander around the town looking for him. They knew exactly where he would be because they had been taking the Lamb of God there every Sabbath for however long they've been living. See, I'm not sure whether any of y'all are aware of that, but yeah, they've been bringing the sacrificed lamb to the exact same spot where they were told that Christ would be laid. They've been doing it all their life. They knew exactly where he would look. That's why it was a sign unto them. That's what the angel said. This will be a sign unto you. You'll find the babe laid in a manger wrapped in the swaddling cloth that you swaddle your sacrifices for so that they don't injure themselves and you, they'll find you right there in that stable where you leave all those ones. They knew exactly right where to go. Now, on the other hand, the kings, when uh, the wise men from the east, they had to go and inquire. Well, where is he? Mm-hmm. That's another world. That's another world. I, I get to where I'm going. I, I promise I'll get to where I'm going. Where did I do that? Yep. Okay, so Peter didn't have any clue where he was going or, or why I can't go with you. Okay, so I got to get John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with, to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. So this is where it was going, and this is why you couldn't go at that point. It wasn't prepared yet. Remember I told you, it's purposefully intentional and had to be prepared before you got there. Much like Christ himself was born for this purpose. Mm. Okay, resurrection. Resurrection. Oh, let's... <laughs> let's go ahead and get buried. What do you say? Colossians, the second chapter... Verses 12 and 13. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which we are also raised with him through your faith in the, in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sin and, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. That's it. See, remember he said that, Martha, I'm the resurrection. So if you're buried with him in baptism, renewed to walk in newness of life, right now. See, remember where Romans chapter 8 says, Therefore there is now no, no, condemnation, no Christ. condemnation to them that are in, in Christ, Christ Jesus? Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Are we? Are we really in Christ Jesus? Like he said, I abide in you, you abide in me. Then whatsoever you ask, you ask, you shall receive. Hmm. If we're living, because we'll go with Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is, what kind of faith? Now faith. Right now, faith. Not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith, but right now, faith. Because life is now. Right? If we ain't living now, we are just going through the motions. Because life is not something that you go through, it's something you do. See, there are a lot of people that just go through life and never live. That's why Jesus said, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And if he's alive, then he'll never die. Because he is life. So if Christ in you, which, oh by the way, is the hope of glory, 
That same glory that he said, if you can believe, Martha, you'll see the glory. Am I making circles or is, am, is, is it coming together here? Yes. You don't know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Like I said, like I said, this guy's going to have some homework because I'm going to hopefully get you something that is going to hit home at some place. I got one more. I got one more. And then I'm, yeah, I'm pretty much got my 30 minutes. Uh. <laughs> okay, so John chapter 20, verse 29. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Okay, so he's talking about Thomas where he said, Hey, I ain't going to believe this unless I see the hands and the feet. And, and I'll even have to put my hand into his side. Because that's how... You guys are all crazy. I seen him die. I saw him get stuck with a spear. You're nuts. Now, he didn't actually have to put his hand in the side. Once he actually saw Jesus, his response was, My Lord and my God. And Christ, yep, Thomas, you are blessed because you see me and you really do believe. But more blessed are those that they are not going to witness this because I'm not going to hang out here forever. But I am just as real whether you ever see me or not because the Spirit, which is what he also said, if you can't believe me for what I say, believe me for the works sake or for that that I do you should believe Mm -hmm. because it's more tangible than the sight because you can be deceived in your eyes Mm -hmm. and in fact the Bible warns against it saying if you see an angel descend from heaven and if you're witnessing this and he preached to you any other gospel other than that which I have already given you to count that accursed. Yes. Now I don't know about all of y'all because I don't know you that well. Uh-huh. But I know a bunch of people and if they see an angel coming down and start saying something they're going to not only run their themselves they're going to compel everybody to come see that which was again also warned against where he said if they say Christ is here don't go there because Christ is here if he's not here it no matter where you go because life is here Because in his presence is abundance of life. That is the resurrection power. And it lives in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold, old things are passed away and all things have become new. For we walk not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's why there is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk in the Spirit. Risen with Him. My Lord. My God. He is a great God. He gives us life. Abundantly. It's never going to stop. And if we can just believe that all things are possible to them that can believe. Pastor, I think (laughs) my time's up. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'm Reuben. When I've never only had 30 minutes to talk. 
I don't know that it can be done, or at least not by me. I'm used to going to Africa where you have three to four hours. And literally three to four hours. And they're wondering, why did you stop? <laughs> so, so, 30 minutes, somebody... I, okay. I'll keep an eye on it. I told my wife that maybe she'd want to set the alarm on her phone to 25 minutes-ish to when it goes off, you can wake back up. <laughs> she said no. Okay, so it's great to be here. I, I, I just feel like I'm with more of my brothers and sisters, which I am because we all have the same father. And apparently some of us have the same hairstylist. <laughs> some of us have the same hairstylist. So, But at any rate, seeing how it is Resurrection Sunday and we're talking about the resurrection, I have a couple of ideas that I would like for you to maybe notice. And I was going to speak something else, but on the way over here, on the ride, as I was going through this in my mind, God put a little something else in there with what I had already thought. Not to say that what I had thought was wrong, but apparently it's going in a different direction than I was expecting. And I'm going to need some help, so I'm going to ask if... Somebody will read for me. <laughs> okay? And uh, if you could, somebody, there's a mic here so that we can give you a, a sound. But I want to start with the, I'll, let, I'll give you a scripture, and it will be Second Kings, the second chapter. You know, that doesn't really sound like resurrection material for the most of us. I'm thinking that we're that when we think of Resurrection Sunday, we don't really think of Elijah. But trust me, it's in there. But firstly, I want to tell you John 11, and you should probably, if you're a Bible reader, realize that this is the story of Lazarus and being resurrected from the dead because again it is resurrection sunday so if you failed to mention a resurrection you would probably be missed your calling here so in uh, chapter 11 of john jesus is going to raise lazarus and uh martha had sent for him he remained where he was at doing what he was doing for two more days. Because, see, he didn't get in a hurry just because we did. <laughs> see, I, do I have to stand here? I mean, can, can I move? Because I really, I'm a walker. But, am I going to mess up your yours? Okay, so... Um, God did things his own way. Still does. Now we sometimes get ahead of him. We sometimes get too far back from him. But he didn't get in a hurry to leave to go at the request, Hey, Lazarus is sick. Can you come heal him? <laughs> it seemed pretty important to Martha. Matter of fact, really important. Because uh, when we're sick, that's kind of what we have on our mind too. Is we want relief. I mean, right? I mean, when, when I don't feel good, my focus somehow becomes on how... I don't feel good. Right? That's just the way we are. I'm 
don't feel good, I'm sick, I need relief. Jesus, on the other hand, continued doing what he was doing. <laughs> didn't, didn't upset him too much that Lazarus didn't feel good. He continued in doing the things he was doing for two more days. Now, if you've read this story, you realize that by the time he got the message, Lazarus stopped feeling bad, he was dead. Now, Jesus probably would have known that already, because, you know, he's Jesus. <laughs> so, so that may have been why he didn't go, oh, we should leave now. Because, like I say, it's a two days journey, and by the time he got there, he said he'd been dead for four days. He waited two more days, uh, two days plus the time he got the message. And yeah, that adds up to he'd have been dead either way. So why not just continue doing what it is you're doing? Just because my timing is not your timing didn't mean it's not the right timing. Now see, we all get in a hurry for God to move on our behalf. And then sometimes he will suddenly. Because there is that suddenly sometimes that God will give us. But mostly that suddenly is going to fit in what he's already doing anyway. <laughs> not to say that you're not important to him, but he's not going to alter his ultimate plan for your convenience or for your lack of suffering, because believe it or not, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Ouch. Ouch, that... That doesn't seem quite right. We're supposed to suffer. That's what he said you were called into. Into his suffering. So, on with the story. He gets in the neighborhood. Martha hears that he's in the neighborhood. Martha goes out. Lord, if you had just been here. And his response is, Martha, don't worry. I'm the resurrection. So she's like, yeah, yeah, I know. At, at the end, he's going to raise and we'll all raise because we believe that. See, And she, much like we do, all believe that. Otherwise, I mean, come on, what's the point? Right? That, that's what we believe. That is the hope of glory, is the resurrection to newness of life, to live forever. But that's not what he said. He said, no, you're not getting it. I am the resurrection. I'm right here. Right here, right now. Now see, we have this same problem too. Because what he said to Martha, he was really saying to me. I, right here, right now, am the resurrection. Newness of life. See, the whole New Testament is this very same gospel. But what makes it the gospel is your experience in it. Yeah, that's what he said. I and you, you and me, we are one as they are one. And all of us become one in one. See, and where Christ is, there is life, because he is life. Now, you continue in the story. He comes and says, roll the stone away. That's your part. So you have to be active in, in this resurrection. You have to roll your stone away. You move the obstacles. Move the obstacles, even if it's just in your mind. You must remove the obstacles. But, no, we can't do that. He surely stinks. He's been in there four days. Well, trust me, you stink. 
your attitude stinks, your your <laughs> your your opinions stink. You stink. But if you can get that out the way, then he said, Remember Martha what I told you. If you can only believe, you'll see the glory of God. And then as you read on, sure enough, Lazarus rises. Okay. <laughs> did they all see the glory of God? Or did some of them just see Lazarus rise? Because there's more than just seeing the glory of God in that. Because you could have been there, seen the event, as you'll notice that some of the religious folks of the age, they saw the event and then they went back and they told the leaders of the religious world of that day, oh man, we're in trouble. Now he's raising the dead. What are we going to do about that? They didn't see glory in God in that. They saw trouble for themselves. Okay, so now you're you gonna read for me, brother? Second Kings chapter two. When the when the Lord was brought when, when the Lord was brought to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on the way from Gal Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, So be quiet. But Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. He replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophet went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to, to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over to dry ground. When they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. Okay, that's... See, there's a lot more than I got time for. See, I, I got to cut myself... Uh, just just saying. So there's all these things... That I, this, and this is really what I want you to get out of this. Is all these places represented something in the spiritual world. See, once we get down to Jordan, we all are aware that that's, Jordan is the river of death and you must cross it. Everybody's aware of that. Jericho also is another spot, which I, I don't have time to. So this guy, you got homework. Because when you actually, if, if I spark your interest in this, and I should, you're going to want to know what these things mean. All right? So when we get to Jordan, I'm going to take my coat off. And I'm going to strike it on death. And I'm going to cross death. And then I'm going to put my coat back on. 